Hey, everybody. I'm Matt Miner, Director of Demand Gen at Directus. Uh, that's a lot of words to say I do marketing stuff. Um, today, I want to talk about a narrative that we're seeing pop up more and more in the software and web development world. Um, and before our big announcement, uh, right after this, I just want to be able to give you a little context so you understand really the, the full lay of the land of, of why we think this is important. And that's this concept of composable architecture. Uh, yes, it's another buzzword that we as the tech industry love to make up seemingly every year uh, for no reason. But this one's actually gaining ground, particularly in larger organizations and for good reason. Uh, I want to preface this with the fact that I've been doing a deep dive for what seems like the last year, but it's actually been the last six months, uh, reading reports, uh, talking to customers, and more really just trying to understand what this term means. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't think anybody knows what it means. Everybody's just kind of making stuff up uh, when it comes to it. So some think it's a mentality in the way you run your organization. Uh, I've even seen some of our competitors who will not be named uh, try to stake claim for it, call it composable X. Uh, but I just want to uh, tell you today what we think of it. And if it fits your organization and the way you think about things, then that's great. Uh, really to kick this off, I want to talk about uh, one of the most interesting things I came across when I was reading all of these mindless reports and uh, having great conversations with customers, which is this uh, concept of Conway's Law. So Conway's Law in of itself, uh, if you think about software development, um, the traditional sense of it is if you have a team that's distributed uh, globally, they're more likely to create modular architecture. If you have a team that is uh, located pretty much in the same place, co-located, uh, they're more likely to create monolithic architectures. And it makes sense because, you know, global teams usually have their own tech stacks. You think of like teams of seven that are, you know, multiple teams at organizations and then teams that are together typically are on the same wavelength using the same framework, same tools, things like that. So when you apply this to the concept of composable, there's two sides of the spectrum, and you're probably familiar with this, which is there's the buy and there's the build. Now, as a non-technical marketer, uh, I typically lean towards the buy side, which is I see a problem. I just go find a software or SaaS that fixes that problem, and then I'm able to quickly get over it uh, really fast. But the problem is, is I have to adapt my the way I work around that. Um, you can think of this getting to a point of where these teams have their own siloed data tech stacks, like just absolutely crazy. Um, a lot of security concerns there, and we have to adapt to the way that the software works. On the other side of the spectrum is this concept of building. And I think most of the audience here, which is you know technical folks, tend to uh, you know lean this way, which is I see a problem. I want to build something to solve it. Um, and I want to build it specifically to what our team needs to solve it. So you get plenty of um, flexibility on that front, um, but you're not able to move as fast or as quickly. We think there is value in that side and being as close to being able to build something as flexible as possible for your team. But there is that overhead of maintenance and resources that could be going into something that's uh, you know, non-essential for, for your products or non-essential contributing back to revenue and growing the business. Um, that's why we believe composable to us is you know, being able to build those apps from elements that everybody understands, the same foundation um, that is flexible enough to work with uh, any framework, Nuxt, Next, React, uh, Vue, um, and from the same kind of, I've already mentioned it, but foundation. So let's talk about where we have been as an industry and where we're going as an industry. Now we're at this crossroads of composable and this concept of it. Uh, previously, everyone's been forced into this buy or build mentality. Like I was saying, non-technical teams 
really prefer to buy things. Technical teams tend to want to build them. Uh, nothing wrong with either choice. There are a few drawbacks. Um, I want to think about this in the terms of like, let's say you've got a wedding at the end of the week that you just find out about and you need a suit. Uh, you can go to the suit store, buy something off the shelf and have it and go to that wedding and probably get made fun of because you look like a kid in a giant suit. Uh, it's not tailored specifically to what you need, but you get it fast and you're there. The other side of that is going to the suit store, getting fitted for your exact need specifications, and then not getting that suit on time, um, on the timeline you were promised. And then that's even a worse scenario outcome because you're just wearing a t-shirt to the wedding. Um, that's really what this old world, new world difference is, is because, you know, let's fast forward to today and what Composable enables. And that's you getting custom tailored at the store. And then just like an Amazon delivery, getting it on your doorstep within one to two days. It's the speed and the flexibility of having both. And we think it is possible. You just need three things in place. One is you need a hub for all of your teams to be able to work from. That's technical and non-technical. Uh, no code for the non-technical teams, low code or heavy code for the technical teams um, that everybody can interact on and be able to create the things they need. Second, you need to have this powered by APIs. So all of the things that you're buying mixed with the things you're building and everything is in beautiful harmony like an orchestra. And then really the third thing is it needs to be flexible enough to work with your business. Um, you can be able to cloud host it and not worry about the infrastructure costs and the setup and the maintenance, or you can self host it if security is a large concern of yours and, uh, you need something on prem. Um, we think the flexibility between all three things is really the key to enabling this composable architecture that everybody seems to be talking about. I want to just talk a little bit about an actual application of this. Uh, so we work with Copa Airlines, which is a you know $2.7 billion uh, airline based in Panama. Um, over 5,000 employees, 16% increase in engineering headcount last year. Now, you're probably aware of the issues that airlines faced earlier this year. Um, a lot of passengers were stranded uh, because of the legacy tech debt that a lot of them had accrued. And we love Copa because not even just with us as a customer, but they're taking a proactive approach and honestly, probably the most proactive we've seen in the industry in making sure that there is no tech debt and there is technology efficient as possible. Um, we started working with them last year. Uh, they came to us for an internal content management system. Um, they wanted to share like news with their employees and have a notification system. So they built that uh, within two months, they had it up and running. This year, they wanted to move their entire marketing website over to it because they found that their non-technical and technical teams were able to get a lot of usage out of it and everybody really enjoyed the experience. So their entire marketing website, which is huge for a company like this because 70% of their sales come from their website and it has to be reliable. So they launched that on Directus, uh, incredible website. Uh, they actually reduced their load speeds from like six seconds to I think like one to two. So it was a huge boost for them in that arena. And now we're talking to them um, about using Directus as like kind of an internal tool builder uh, app builder, things that they can provide to their customers that aren't necessarily just CMS based. So it's really cool to work with them and see this trajectory that they're taking with it. Um, they're finding a lot of usage out of it outside of just that like classic CMS, which is where they started. It was the proving ground. And now there's a lot of uh, flexibility and things that they can do with it. So just to reiterate what I said at the beginning and wrap this up, uh, there's no clear definition of composable architecture. But what brings us confidence in the way that we talk about it and we see the path forward is we see hundreds of users doing exactly this every single day. And just to wrap it up with a case in point, uh, we asked our community of 10,000 developers and engineers, like, how would you describe Directus? And the funny thing is we didn't get a single response that was the same. 
Uh, that's awesome for folks that have discovered us and are using us for multiple use cases, but that's not awesome for new potential users that could be overwhelmed by the capabilities and what to do with it. Uh, but as we start to refine the product, grow with the awesome support from the community, we feel like there's so much more that it could be used for other than just this content management uh, use case, which it's really strong for, but there is a lot of other things you can be doing to get value out of it. 